Hi, and welcome back. In this episode, we're gonna take three things we figured out before separately and show that they're all just special cases of a more general rule or pattern. And that's gonna be very satisfying and it'll let us conclude a lot of other stuff too with no work. Okay, here are all the three n plus one loops of length k equals eight that have x equals five up moves. For example, there's only one number where if you apply the three n plus one rule to it, you get five odds, that's up moves, followed by three evens, that's down moves, that loops back to itself. And that number is 211 over 13, which is a fraction. Uh, and every member of every loop here turns out to be a fraction. No loop consists of integers, and so none of them disprove the 3n plus 1 conjecture. But there's infinitely more charts like this with longer and longer loops. So we've peeled off some special cases. First, we looked at the outer loop here, the circuit loop, with all up moves followed by all down moves. The bottom member here is 211 over 13, which is not an integer because 13 doesn't divide 211 evenly. But we also showed that the bottom member of any circuit loop is gonna be a fraction instead of an integer. The bottom of the circuit always takes this form and we employed some heavy artillery to show why this can't ever be an integer no matter how big K and X get. Second, we looked at regularly shaped loops like this one consisting of a bunch of up, up, downs followed by a bunch of downs. And we proved that it likewise never contains integers no matter how long. And finally, we looked at the high loop, the one whose bottom member is largest among all the loops. We couldn't get a closed form for any member of the high loop, so we took a different tack. We picked two members of the high loop, these two, and we said if they're both integers, then their difference must also be an integer. But here, their difference is 485 over 13 minus 421 over 13, which is 64 over 13, which is 2 to the 6th over 13, which in fact can't be an integer because there's no 13 in the denominator, uh, in the numerator to cancel out the denominator. So this high loop can't contain integers. And better still, every high loop in every chart like this has two such numbers, so high loops can never contain integers. Now, it turns out there's a simple reason behind all three of these types of loops uh, not being 3n plus 1 counterexamples. So to see why, let's apply our high loop trick back to the circuit loop. If the first two members of the circuit loop were integers, then their difference would also be an integer. Here it's 323 over 13 minus 211 over 13, which is uh, 112 over 13, which is 2 to the 4th times 7 over 13. But if that were an integer, then 7 over 13 would also be an integer, which it's obviously not. And uh, so likewise, uh, for the up, up, down case, we can take the first member of the loop, the bottom one, and subtract it from the fourth member of the loop, uh, and it'll work out. So what do all these cases have in common? Well, for the any of these loops, we can always find two members that follow very similar trajectories. So the bottom member of the circuit has this trajectory, all ups followed by all, all downs. And to get the mem next member of the circuit, we rotate the loop, all ups followed by all downs followed by a single up. Now notice that the trajectories match for the first four moves. And that four turns out to be the same four in this two to the fourth times seven over 13. Uh, with the high loop, our magical pair of members have trajectories uh, that match for the first six moves, which gives us 2 to the 6th over 13. And with this long up, up, down loop, the two, these two members also have similar trajectories. They both start with a long repeated sequence of up, up, downs. So what's the general rule? Well, it's that if we can find two members of a loop whose trajectories match for at least half the length of the loop, then they can't be integers. So it's really satisfying that circuits and high loops and regular loops all have this same property. And this is really uh, what's behind it all. So why does this general rule hold? Well, we gotta show that this seven here is always less than this 13 here, no matter what case we're dealing with. Now the 13 is just two to the K minus three to the X. And the seven is given by our analog computer from episode 11. So here are two members of loop that initially match. The worst case for their non-matching part, according to the analog computer, looks like this. And if we crunch out the value of the difference, we find that the numerator uh, is always less than 1.75 to the k, while the denominator 
according to Ellison's theorem, is always greater than 1.8 to the k. Now, uh, and so this thing could never be an integer. I know that's a little bit hand wavy, and hilariously, it doesn't even work for this case because 1 to the 1.8 to the k is greater than 13, but it works whenever k is greater than 27. So that's pretty satisfying progress. Now, you might be wondering what other loops does this method apply to, especially in monster charts where uh, you know every loop has millions of members. Well, it applies to lots of them, uh, some with regular patterns like this and some with irregular patterns. Uh, but if we randomly select a loop uh, like this one, the best two rotations will still only match just a little bit uh, and much less than half the length of the loop. And in fact, we can construct a specific loop where it's guaranteed that no two members have similar trajectories. And so we can call that the nasty loop because it does its best to confound our current method. Anyway, we'll look at that in another episode. So thanks for tuning in.